same face that this world has forgotten. Ooh, what is up, guys? And of course, uh, welcome to a Ports of Pokemon and Wi Fi battle with two of course, this character. And today, we're going up against, of course, Emerson in what I would say a very, very interesting team. Now, he has Vicavolt, Decidueye, Turtonator, um, Gumshoe? Damn, I'm trying to forget the Pokemon for some time here. But Pelosad and Muck. So, his team definitely, definitely looks the pot. Now, I myself use a Milk Tank. Uh, Mud Spray, Hydreigon, Karakosta, Magnuson, and Crabominal. So I felt that my team definitely was stronger going into this game. I felt I had a team advantage. Definitely one of those standing out is, of course, a Hydreigon just... Well, it deals with so many opportunities here. Once Muck is gone, I'm not sure he can deal with my uh, Hydreigon whatsoever. But aside of that, I have to watch out to record like a Pelosan because Pelosan is kind of hard to take out with this team, mainly because while it's not the speediest spawn, it still is a Pokemon that deals really well with a flat of my Pokemon. And of course, Milk Tank, which is going to be my lead, cannot have Stealth Rocks until, of course, Pokemon is out. So it's just a defensive wall with Thunder Wave, and it's actually completely walled by Pelosan because my only main attack is actually Seismic Toss. So, yeah, with all that said, let's see what actually happened. So, alright, from the get go, I will lead off with Musa, of course, the Milk Tank. As he's an old was Wargrave, the Vicavolt. Now, here's the thing, I'm not sure Vicavol can do all that damage to me, so I'll just go for Siphon Toss gives my scout damage. It looks to be maybe a 4th KO as he goes for Volt Switch. It does a lot of damage. I mean, it should do, but I was thinking I should take it at least you no know, better. As he comes Maston. Now, here's the thing, Muck is not so dangerous depending on the set. He can curse up against me and that would be annoying, but that's about it. Uh, I'm just going to have a free Thunder Wave, and mainly here I'm just going to scout the damage output. As he goes, actually, I was going to say Brick Break, but not yet. Spoiling! But yeah, obviously he gets fully paralyzed, luckily me, clearly. And I am free here to go for a Seismic Toss. Now the Seismic Toss actually does a lot of damage, considering that Muck is actually having a lot of HP. Uh, he actually goes for Knockoff, how about that? Forget about that. So anyway, Knockoff definitely does a plenty of the man amount of damage here, but the thing is here, it doesn't look like it's an offensive muck. It looks to have a defensive investment because Brick Break and of course a knockoff do not do as much damage that I was kind of aiming for. Now, having that said, I am max defense, but muck should clearly do more than that. And two Siphon Dog is over 50%, so clearly it's an investment in its, in, in its defenses. And I felt kind of like a douche standing there because I just... I couldn't necessarily hurt it all that much, but at the same time that went for him too. So, luckily, he goes for Gunk Shot here, which is resisted by Rygar, and I switch into. And, of course, you know, Stamina kicking in, not necessarily gonna matter. I'm just gonna go for free Earthquake here, because the only switching he has is actually Vicavolt. But at the time that I was playing this game, I forgot that um, Vicavolt actually has Levitate. Had I knew that, I probably wouldn't have gone for Earthquake. But, yeah, that's what I did. So, anyway, here goes Below. And I have no idea what my opponent was thinking here. He goes for Rest, so he has something in mind here. That definitely didn't pay off. Probably weakness policy of variant, but the superpower is actually enough to KO the below or the gumshoe. So yeah, that's gumshoe for you. So he's gone. And so now here comes the Wargrave. And as I said here, I forgot about Levitate. So while Wick of all actually will outspeed and goes for Bug Buzz over of course the lies of Energy Ball, I will not be able to hit him here the first turn. Which you know, unlucky me, but then again, you know, it's kind of stupid forgetting, of course, about Levitate. But, uh, one only face this Pokemon so much, you know, even even the great men of tomorrow can make mistakes. Uh, but yeah, <laughs> I have no idea why I said that. Anyway, uh, I do go for Rock Tomb here, I actually miss it, so that's, you know, that's great. Uh, I do connect the next one, though, and uh, it actually isn't doing as much damage as I was hoping for. You know, I did decide to have Rock Tomb over, of course, like of Stone Edge, because I wanted to hit. So it's always awesome when you miss anyway. You know, that's that's fair. So Rock Tomb is so close to KO, but it's alright. It's not like my um, Mud Spray, I was going to say, but uh, Mud Dale is going to do too much this game. And I think it did more than well here, considering I actually knocked out the Gumshoe, which is kind of cool. So anyway, I'm just going to go to Caracosta. Since I have awkward yet, there's no reason for me not to use it. I'm just going to showcase to him that I have priority. That's why I call him the Chief, the Caracosta. And he's going to bring in Vera here. And I was feeling, hmm, 
the thing is here, I don't want to activate the consumption here, and I can't learn knock of us just yet, so it's no reason going for that weakness policy um, shell smash situations. I'm just gonna go to Hydreigon and fire off a Dark Pulse. Now, here's the thing. There are no switch into this mod. There, there, there are no switch in. So Brent's gonna come in, and like I said, there are no switch in. Dark Pulse just gonna annihilate him. And, um, yeah, that's what I'm gonna do. I'm going to annihilate, um, What's it called? Turtinator? More like Eaton Browdinator. I, I have no idea. Uh, anyway, so the situation comes in here as well. Alright, I, I could spam Dark Pulse and wrap up the game. Or I could showcase Shum Lee, my, um, my awesome, so great, so wonderful Crabominal. And then he did this. He went for the Seymour Sinister Air Raid. And, and trust me, guys. Of all the things I think about my Shum Lee, my awesome, awesome Krabam and all, surviving this is definitely not one of them. He's gonna die. Um, but he actually survives. And I'm feeling here like, hmm? I, I still can't hurt him. I still want to outspeed him. And Spirit Shackle will just be the wrap there. And poor, poor Shum Lee. But I have a golden opportunity here to actually just set up, of course, Karakostas. A weakness policy because I need to be at plus six to even kill a Pelisad. Luckily for me, he goes for, of course, um, what do you call it? Uh, Sucker Punch of a Leaf Blade, which is great because that means the next round we'll be able to outspeed him. I don't care if he goes for another Sucker Punch. Um, I definitely wasn't expecting that. I was definitely expecting a Leaf Blade. Uh, so Stonehenge is enough to, of course, KO the, um, the Sidui. There's no, no turning around there. I, I do let connect it to Stonehenge. Clearly, that helped. So Pelosan is the last month, so I'm just going to go for another Shell Smash, as I am hoping that he goes for Earth Power or Earthquake, just to get me that plus 6 area so I can KO him with an Aqua Jet. And what do you know? Earthquake it is. So we have, of course, since we are sturdy, we are now going to survive, of course, due to it. And then we have, of course, like I said, the weakness policy. So the Chief is now plus 6, plus 6, plus 4 in its offenses. So, with that said, Aqua Jet is of course a KO, and also to Emerson, thank you of course so much for this battle, it was very very straightforward, and as I said there, I do believe I had a stronger team, and it clearly was showcased there that just um, the sheer amount of power in my team was just, it was just up there, it was just very very scary to be able to deal with properly, so I, I did enjoy the game even though you know it was, like I said here, kind of straightforward. So yeah, I mean, if I give, give him credit to my opponent, I'll definitely say Palo Sand and Muck and uh, Vikavolt, awesome Pokemon to use against me. And, you know, they have been, I've been seeing them a lot more lately. While they're not the most conventional mons, I do appreciate them. And Muck, definitely one of those Pokemons that, while I definitely feel it's still a bad Pokemon, as a poison type it is, it's still the combination definitely makes it hard to deal with, and definitely in this meta, you know, before Pokemon is out, it actually does fairly well because it's a very, very prominent typing. It does super well. Though it needs the offensive investment in it. I do believe that people are using it defensively with Curse. It's it's not working. Uh, you're much better off going fully attacking investment. Just straight on that and just go bananas with it. But yeah, with that said, guys, I want to thank you, of course, for watching. And really, really enjoy your Christmas, guys. It's been great having, of course, an area to you, all of you. I'm actually, as I'm, I'm recording this at home, actually, the 22nd, but trust me, at this moment, I am in a little house somewhere in a place called Dingle. It's the middle of nowhere, and I barely have any internet there, and yeah, I, I'm stuck here. <laughs> Don't worry, though, you know, I'm back on Monday, but yeah, it's, it's rough. Um, I definitely appreciate you guys watching this and taking the time of your day. Of course, to just watch this video and laugh at me, you know, and all that stuff. Hell, I hope you guys just keep on doing that because you guys are just the best. So anyway, with that like I said, guys, thank you, of course. Like I said, there's so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Until then, of course, take care. Bye.